And we have with us today Associate Professor Dr. Shariman Zainal Abidin, who will be sharing with us a step-by-step -step guide um, to ap applying for Erasmus Plus grant. And um, if you are watching this, you will know that we are currently streaming at two main platforms. So we have uh, via this Google Meet and we have Facebook Live. And uh, kindly stay tuned until the end of the webinar uh, for the attendance link, which the uh, secretary will provide. Okay. It does look like we have met the maximum capacity for Google Meet platform. Uh, we can give another maybe one or two minutes for participants to continue joining us in Facebook. Uh, meanwhile, I take this opportunity to introduce um, our speaker for today. So, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Shariman Zainal Abidin is currently a Deputy Director for Logistics and Transportation of uh, Research Nexus under, under the Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation, UITM. He has attained a PhD in Industrial Design Engineering from NTNU Norway. As a head of form giving design, design research group in UITM, um, his research interest is in the area of design thinking and form giving. Um, Dr. Shariman has uh, been attached at Proton as a subject matter expert, where he developed core methodologies with regards to styling DNA for both interior and exterior across all A, B, C, D, and K segments of Proton Pass. And um, in, 19, in, uh, in 2014, he has received first prize for National Intellectual Property Award under the Industrial Design category and WIPO and My IPO Award for UITM. As an academic and a researcher, he is the editorial panel editor, editor in chief for many national and international journals with more than 40 published papers all around the world. And in terms of grant, uh, he has and currently is the recipient of FRGS, ERGS, and PRGS, as well as uh, KTP grant from the Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia, and other UITM grants with value uh, totaling 1.2 million. Um, and finally, the reason we are all here today, Dr. Sharman is currently the project leader for UITM on improving Malaysian higher education knowledge towards a wood and furniture industry 4.0, or known simply as making 4.0. And uh, this is under the Erasmus Plus grant, which is a collaborative effort between four higher education in EU and uh, four Malaysian university uh, with MPIB. Right. So without further ado, I think yeah, we uh, we can begin. So I will pass this on to Prof. Madia Shariman. Uh, we will be taking questions but uh, via the chat. Um, so I can, Prof. Bole in between, yeah? I can yeah, yeah. question, you can post it and I will bring it to the attention of uh, uh, Dr. Shariman. Otherwise, we, we will have a Q&A session at the end. Right? Okay, so pass on to you, Prof. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Latrina Marian Pitoyong, uh, my office colleague uh, <laughs> at the Department of Industrial Design, uh, Faculty of Art and Design, UITM Shalam. Thank you for the introductions. Okay, um, I don't know whether everybody, everyone know about Erasmus. Yeah? I, I don't know about Erasmus uh, until in the year of uh, 2006, eh? uh, when, when I did my master degree at Coventry University in England in uh, 1999, I haven't heard any recipient or any anybody sponsored by Erasmus, especially uh, a student from United Kingdom or a student outside United Kingdom. But in, in the year of 2012, when I embarked or enrolled as a PhD student in Norway, I heard in, 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 in I mean, at, at the university, there's a group of students from a third world country, Indonesia in particular, 
and my my neighbor is Indonesian and he always talk about Erasmus Mundus yeah? and at that point of time I noticed that Erasmus Mundus is uh, one of the opportunity for a third world country uh, a student eligible uh, to them uh, for them to apply and I heard that uh, there, there are about more than 200 number of Indonesian students uh, receive Erasmus Mundus grant. Uh, and I'm, at, that, at that time, I'm trying to Google the information about Erasmus Mundus, what it's all, all about in the internet. And I noticed that uh, it is a, a grant for third world country. And Malaysia is not eligible to apply because maybe we claim that we are uh i mean uh, a developed country uh, so that's that's the the things yeah but um a few months later in the in the year of 2000 uh 2012 i heard that there's a a, a guy from egypt who will come to to study at, at the NTNU Norway uh, uh, in the year of 2013. Eh? His name is Hani, Hani El Said. Eh? Hani El Said is a one of uh, Egyptian guys from Cairo. And when I, I met him uh, in the year of 2013, uh, he, he told me that he Managed to, to to go to Norway using by using Erasmus Plus grant, uh, but it is uh, only uh, for a certain duration uh, time for student mobility program. Yeah? So I'm trying to Google in the internet. So I found that oh there are uh, several key action that we can apply, whether it is individual or it is uh, in form of organization. Yeah? Okay, and uh, I can see that the slide uh, is okay now. Okay, Anna, Nina, yes, can, you show, can you make a slideshow? Nina. Where is Nina? Nina? Okay, today I'm going to share about our experience. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to teach you in detail how to get grant, eh? but I'm, I, I just want to share you our experience or my experience uh, about applying the, the Erasmus Plus grant because we managed to get grant uh, in the year of 2018. Eh? Okay, uh, as everybody know, I think recently everybody know about Erasmus all about eh? it is an international grant and Erasmus Plus is the EU program to support education training youth and sport in Europe uh, so it is eligible for European countries eh? and is budget of a uh, 14.7 billion which provide opportunity for over uh, 4 million Europeans to study train and gain experience abroad eh? and the the one of the main reason is is that the grant uh, provide uh, uh, students for and and uh, either individual or organization. Eh? So in uh, in individual Erasmus Plus has opportunities for people of all ages, helping them develop and share knowledge and experience at institution and organization in different country. And for organization, Erasmus Plus has opportunity for a wide range of organization, including university, education, training provider, think tank, research organization, and provide businesses. Eh? Um, Prof, can we have it in a bigger uh, presentation mode? Yeah, for uh, someone who is on the phone, Kachi. Ah, I, I'm not controlling the slide. Yeah, oh, right okay. Nina, yang, Nina, can you uh, turn it into a sli 
Slide. Oh, there. All right. Uh, very nice. Gina, <laughs> Gina. So I'm not in the control again of slide. Okay. Oh, um, uh, she's saying that memang tak boleh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay lah. I think. Just show it. Show show the slide because Nina not uh, sit next to me. Okay. All right. Sit uh, at the different office. Eh? Okay. Okay, uh, normally the aim of Erasmus Plus is to contribute to the European uh, 2020 strategy lah for job, for, for growth, job, uh, social equality and inclusion and it is in line with the EU strategy framework for education and training. Eh? And the, the, the main reason is that they want to tackle specific issue lah. First, in reducing unemployment, uh, especially among young people, and then promoting adults' learning, especially for a new skill and skill uh, required by the labor market, and then encouraging young people to take part in European democracy and support innovations, uh, co cooperation and reform and then reducing early school living and then promoting cooperation and mobility with the, the European, the EU partners country. Eh? And normally the outcome of the, e, the Erasmus Plus are available in report and compedience of statistics as well as through the Erasmus Plus project platform, which include most of the initiative funded by the program as well as a selection of good practices and successful story. Nina, can you can you move to the next slide? So that's the thing. Okay, uh, can you move uh, one more? The next one, okay. Talking about the the project list, yeah, there are about five eh, type of project list. Eh. When we want to apply the Erasmus Plus, yeah, especially for, for organization, eh, there are five project lists that we can apply. First one is KA1. KA1 means key action one. Uh, it is uh, on the mobility project in the field of education and training. Eh? So this is uh, uh, the key action where you can uh, apply grant if you if you manage to get the MOU between uh, your European partners, yeah, uh, from uh, your European partners, European country partners, yeah. Okay, uh, normally when we talk about KA1, eh, there, there are several names, uh, yeah, which I'm very familiar is KA107. Eh? KA107 is uh, the the grant for staff and student mobility program, eh? and uh normally it is for a certain uh, task or certain deliverable and it is on uh, either one off or a short duration of time mobility program eh? uh, for for your information at uitm there's a one guy uh, nadia datuk tantawi eh? she used to get ka1 grant for student staff mobility program and she told me that she managed to get uh, more than 2000 euro for one treat uh, like a two weeks uh, mobility program at Poland. Uh, normally it's depend on the area you plan to go. Eh? If you go to Germany then you can get more than uh, more than 2000 depend on the the rate or depend on the country and depend on the, the agreement between you and and the, the potential partner. Yeah? The second one is a KA2, key, key action two, which is more on strategic partnership in the field of education and training. Uh, this is uh, where uh, my team and, and I managed to get grant. Yeah? Uh, and there, there are several, uh, if I, okay, there are several, Uh, okay, in KA2, there are several uh, lists of projects. One of them is uh, capacity building in higher education. Eh? 
normally when we talk about capacity building in higher education it is about how you develop a new program yeah normally uh, at master degree level so i i can show you our project later yeah okay uh the other project list is KA3. KA3 is a, a support for policy reform. I, I, I haven't applied this, so I haven't got a detail on this. Eh? This is more on, on uh, developing a policy for a certain a project, eh? but I, I, I haven't got any detail on that. The fourth one is uh, Sean Manette. Sean Manette is one of the Erasmus, under, under the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, I think it is quite similar with KA2. Eh? But I haven't got experience on applying that as well. Eh? If I'm not mistaken, there are no recipients from Malaysia for Sean Manette last year. Um, but yeah, it is good to try because there is uh, uh, there might be a tendency if you apply then you may get the, that particular grant as well and the the other project list is a sport eh? so at this moment i heard the the faculty of sport science managed to get erasmus plus grant uh, for sport eh? because based on uh, uh, nadia tantawi she she told me that she heard about Erasmus Plus uh, grant from Faculty of Sports Science. Eh? Okay, uh, maybe we can go to the next slide. Eh? Uh, okay, uh, Erasmus Plus uh, grant is the grant to encourage or to support eh, education, training, sport and youth. Eh. Uh, that's the, the four area that normally been uh, really give, given an emphasis by the uh, European Commission when they want to uh, grant, it, grant you an Erasmus Plus grant. Eh. And can, Nadia, can you go to the next slide? Can I leave that? But Nina, can you go to the next slide? Okay, okay, that. Into it. When when you uh, apply, uh, when you get a grant, normally you can build a, a huge networking, yeah, a big networking, uh, especially with local university and university from European countries, yeah. and at it, at it, at, and at the same time, you can also. Uh, make a networking with the industry, the government agency, yeah, in uh, in Malaysia and in European country as well. So this is uh, the way how you build a networking, eh? networking. So next, uh, okay, I think this is a uh, important part of the of the session. Eh? <laughs> okay, what should we do eh, if we want to apply? an Erasmus Plus grant. Okay, before, step one, step one, <clears throat> before you apply grant, I would, I would, I would advise you to make sure everybody know you. Eh? Uh, one of, of the best way to make you visible in the eyes of researcher at the European countries is that by uh, updating your, your performance or your CV at your university website yeah? because uh, when we talk about a partnership or any body who, who, who plan to engage with you normally they will google your your area of expertise or your name through the internet yeah? and uh, most of the time when your your name appear on their screen, then they will engage with you. Eh? So that is why it is good if you can make sure people know you. Eh? Okay, there is a two two way lah, to to get 
uh, 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 to get a networking from the European countries. Yeah? Uh, one, it can be can be done uh, through you as a as a researcher. Seek you seek uh, or you search seek the information or you try to engage anybody from European countries which are eligible to apply Erasmus Plus grant. Maknanya, you as a person, you seek uh, a potential partner to develop a proposal. Eh? The, the other one is you, uh, the European uh, partners uh seek the the uh, the seek the, the information about the area that they want to develop and normally if you are uh in in the area that they are expected then they uh you, they will engage with you eh? so in my case eh, last time i'm not the 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 person who developed a proposal in malaysia eh? Uh, maybe, uh, I would say that I might be lucky last time because there's a, a one guy from Spain. Yeah? He his name is Juan Jo in the in the email. Yeah? But when when we met during the key, first key of meeting, uh, his name is Juan Ko, and uh, it is a matter of uh, pronunciation, lah. Yeah? Because we, because if we study in England, normally we use a standard English, yeah? but if you study at a European country or Scandinavian country, the the pronunciation might be different. Yeah? They tak kata consonant, they tak kata apa, apa consonant A, B, C, D, E. Yeah? They, they, they will spell the A, B, C to A, B, C, D, A. Yeah? Uh, even if you can you read Ikea and I K E A and in Scandinavia in European country they pronounce it Ikea but if you go to United Kingdom they might pronounce Ikea and it's a, a matter of um, a pronunciation or a linguistic or interpretation of of term or language yeah? okay uh, when when Kwanko contacted me last time uh, he asked me if I can engage with him in developing a, a proposal for uh, for applying Erasmus Plus grant, eh, which has happened in the year of uh, 2017. Eh. He told me that he developing a, a new pro program and then uh, under the Erasmus Plus uh, grant, and he asked me to be to become one of the the uh, the potential partners eh? and he told me that he tried to get another person as well from other university and i i told him why you uh, look at me at the first place then eh? to become a potential partner and he he told me that he he want to get somebody who can uh, can advise about design uh, industrial uh, furniture design in particular uh, so at that time uh, uh, I, I, I asked I asked him another question where you where he got my name he, he, he told me that he got my name at, at the university website and at the same time he googled my name through the Scopus publication, he found that I, I have published several paper with regards to, uh, to, to industrial design or furniture design, in particular. So he he told me that he will develop a proposal for KA two, K action two, capacity building in higher education, for three years uh, duration of time. And he told me that for Erasmus Plus program, for three years uh, duration uh, of time, we can apply up to 1 million euro. So that's the ceiling. Uh. Uh, normally when we talk
talk about Erasmus plan ni, it can be either two years or three years kan. Uh, kalau two years ni, it can be lesser than that lah. But the the floor for Erasmus plus KA, KA2 ni is a 500,000 euro. Uh, that's the floor. The ceiling is a, a 1 million euro. Eh. So, Kuangko asked me to give, he, he asked me if I can provide my CV, my latest CV update and he asked me several questions with regards to the topic now. So I need to give him an input. Yeah. He told me that he want to develop a new master degree program uh, for uh, uh, wood and furniture towards industry 4.0. Eh? So, what can I say here when we talk about uh, uh, when there is somebody from Euro European country email you, it is good if you can reply them. Eh? Some some of uh, some of uh, researcher and eh, they refuse to to reply any email from abroad. Eh? Maybe they they are skeptical with the. The person eh, the takut a scammer <laughs> ataupun uh, somebody who try to uh, take advantage eh. but but in many cases yeah, if you if you look at an uh, email you you can identify who sent you an email eh. for 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 my case last time I noticed that Kwanko he came from CTEM. CTEM is one of the organization eh, in, in Spain eh. I'm, I'm trying to Google Kwanko, who is Kwanko ni? So I noticed that he is a, a previous Erasmus Plus grant recipient. He managed to to get more than 50 number of European grant, including Erasmus Plus. Then I feel, and then, then I feel comfortable to engage with him. And I, I think the element of agile is important eh, when you negotiate with people from uh, European country when when they ask you, you to become a partners when you want to apply an international grant. Eh? Okay, uh, first make sure people know you. Second, it is good if you can engage, eh, if you want to apply an Erasmus Plus, I, I would advise if you can engage with anybody who are a uh, previous recipient grant eh? Ha, macam mana nak tahu kan? Ha, normally we can we can ask the detailed information from them lah. Okay, ha, this is just to minimize the risk lah. If, if not then they, they might be a they might be a, a big risk for you to to get grant eh. Ha, mungkin for me lah if you engage with people who are a previous Erasmus Plus Grand recipient, they might have a skill at how to tap the opportunity to apply grant. If you look at the proposal, it's not a one or two or three pages number of uh, uh, proposal grant application. It is more than a hundred number of pages. Uh, it is quite uh, plenty. Yeah? Is, it is very plenty. Okay. And then, um, and then get ready with your CV latest update. Eh? When you apply an international grant, Erasmus Plus in particular, normally you need to provide them with your CV, eh? latest CV update. Your publication, your, uh, your previous project, uh, grant information yeah if you a national grant uh, recipient then they they will they will consider that consider that you can deliver the project eh? okay if you can uh, have that it is good because it is it is important information that needs to be provided in the the, the proposal eh? And then you you need to know uh, the you need to identify the track lah uh, whether you want to go for education training or sport or youth. Eh? But normally in in many cases Erasmus Plus grant eh, it is 
design for education sebenarnya so that is why at the end of the the project eh, you need to develop a new program master degree program kan normally you will become a consultant eh, uh, with them eh, with with the potential partners eh. uh, meaning that uh, all the apa dia all the the mess or all the job ni will be will be handled by handled by a coordinator at at the European countries I mean the, your your potential partner normally they will form a consortium lah eh. so consortium ni normally they, there are uh, uh, a few university who will engage with you lah in in in, the, in that particular pro project eh. okay uh, Next, uh, you need to know there is a two types. In, in my case, eh, I I used to apply KA2. KA2 is Key Action 2 which is more on capacity building and higher education. And after we get KA2, we apply KA107. KA107 is an additional grant uh, where we can apply as a supplement to support KA2 project. Okay, orang tanya lah kan, if you want to apply grant, when? When is the deadline? Normally the deadline for submission of the proposal is around February, yeah? Every year, yeah? So that uh, since now is uh, Ju uh, June, so I think it, it is the best time uh, for you to engage with anybody from, any, any researcher from uh, European country to develop a proposal. Eh? Okay, <clears throat> and then how many eh, in the group? Uh, which is the best? Eh? For me, depends. Normally five, five is uh, sufficient eh, enough for one group eh? uh, because uh, when when you apa ni, when the consortium to build, eh, you can see there are plenty number of researchers involved though. from European country ni, there, there might be uh, three or four university yang akan engage kan eh? and they, they have about five to six number of uh, apa ni, uh, members kan eh? so when you include all of them, can they will become plenty, eh? plenty number of uh, research involved in one project. So normally for Erasmus Plus project ni, capacity building and higher education, uh, it is uh, for staff no? it is for staff. Maknanya, you as a staff, uh, you become a researcher and you normally will become a subject matter expert uh, during the development of a new program no? Sebab tu dia ada, dia ada staff course, dia tak ada student dia tak ada student course lah, dia ada staff course saja kan. Ah, uh, We talk about that uh, in the second step tu nanti eh. Okay. Uh, that's uh, on the KA1, uh, KA2 and KA107 ya. Yeah. KA107 ni additional grant, normally uh, when you get KA2, it is good if you can have KA 107 as well as a supplement ya. Yeah. Yang tu you kena ada MOU lah. So MOU ni kalau dekat uh, yeah, at European country ni, it can be one page or maximum pun three pages lah yeah. So MOU biasanya signed by VC ataupun rector both university lah. Uh, kalau for Erasmus Plus grant ni, normally MOU ni simple je. That there is no ceremony lah. Eh. It, it is just uh, apa ni, a formality eh, to, in order for you to apply grant. Eh. And then uh, talking about institution, eh, all university around the world ni, we, we we have a PIC number. PIC number uh, is like a identity lah for every university. Eh. I noticed that when when we apply in in the year of 2017 last time eh, there are several number and so uh, Prof, yeah Prof, there's a question yeah. um 
uh, regarding what you just mentioned just now on MOU, is there an MOU needed for KA1 application? KA1 by Dr. Ruhaila. Uh, KA1 application, yes. But KA2, uh, there is no, it, it is not a requirement uh, uh, during my time. Eh? But when we get grant, we need to sign the partnership agreement. Dia lain pula. Dia macam MOA lah. KA2 lebih pada MOA. KA1 lebih pada uh, MOU. Alright. Okay. Okay, uh, the PIC number, back to the PIC number. We we noticed that UITM ada tiga nombor tau. Three PIC number. One is University Teknologi Mara. The other one, University Teknologi Mara yang apa, University of the Y. Teknologi the Y kan, ada Mara. And the third one is University Teknologi Mara, Cawangan Sarawak eh. Tapi Cawangan Sarawak tu saya dah tahu lah. I think it, it is uh, mungkin previous project uh, Dr. Margaret eh. Dr. Margaret is the one of uh, active researcher lah who, who used to be Erasmus Plus grant recipient eh. So maybe it is under project Dr. Margaret lah. So I, I talk to uh, Kuangko, which number do you think is good for us eh, to to use as a reference eh, for PIC number? And Kuangko say that uh, just pick one of them lah. So saya saya kita guna yang nombor ni lah nine one two one eight o five three two. Yeah, this uh, this is the uh, the number that we are using right now. And the number is important yeah, during the validity uh, verification yeah, because when you manage to get grant, you need to make a verification yeah, by referring this particular number lah. If not, it's going to be slip lah. You cannot verify. So I would advise everybody use nine one two one eight zero five three two for PIC number. Yeah. Jadi you just provide to the uh, you just provide this information to your your coordinator ataupun partners who will apply an Erasmus Plus grant tu eh. And then uh, when you uh, apply, uh, Prof, yeah. Prof, maybe you can repeat that number again. The screen is very very small so macam tak boleh nampak. Tak nampak eh. Uh -huh. Okay. 9 Ah, nanti biasanya akan keluar lah ada nombor tu. Yes, correct. And then you need to provide the VAT number. Yeah, VAT number ni dia macam tax lah, taxation kan. Kalau kat Malaysia uh, dulu GST, sekarang SST ya. Yeah. So you can get uh, the v, apa ni SST number ni through the Benda hari UITM, UITM treasurer ataupun bursary kan, so, UITM bursary kan. So UITM, we, we, uh, benda hari UITM, we provide you SST number. And then the next things you need to know when you apply a grant is providing a mandate eh. Mandate ni dia skeping is a, 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 a one piece of paper where it is a main requirement on that particular mandate which vice chancellor of university will sign the the, the mandate lah yeah so uh, mandate ni kita kena provide the the PIC number and the VAT number okay sebenarnya mandate ni ada dalam senar, senarai apa ni tapi saya tak boleh nak tunjuk kat sini eh Uh, saya ada contoh mandate tu dalam dokumen Nina. Nina? Nina? Oh Nina. Uh, dalam banyak-banyak folder tu. Nina kecilkan ni, kecilkan ni. Pergi yang banyak-banyak folder tu. Ada satu namanya mandate. Boleh tak show mandate tu? Okay kejap eh. Uh, saya rasa macam saya dah boleh on saya punya 
Nampak tak screen saya ni? Ah, yes, Prof. You are presenting. Okay, okay. Ah, mm. Okay, Nina tak payah buat apa-apa. Saya akan guna saya punya screen ni. Okay, ah, nampak eh? Yes. So, this is the mandate lah. Uh, masa zaman saya dulu, masa saya apply tahun 2017 Datuk Hassan lah yang dat Profesor Emeritus Datuk Dr. Hassan Said ya, yang saya mandat lah. Sekarang Profesor Insinyur Datuk uh, Dr. Muhammad Azrai Kasim yang akan saya ni. So mandat ni is a piece of, a one piece of paper eh, where we see we'll sign eh, on behalf of UITM. Mandate is is important eh, because it shows your apa ni uh, represent the university lah who will become a partners eh. So the, uh, then biasanya dekat mandate ni akan ada BAT number masa zaman saya dulu GST lah and then the other one is PIC number eh. So as a beneficiary eh. So BC akan sign. Okey, ni dah okey lain ya. Saya tunjuk slide saya tu. Boleh boleh nampak? Uh, nanti nak boleh nampak tak slide ni? Boleh, better. Okey, better ya. Okey, Alhamdulillah. Uf, susah juga webinar ni. Sekarang-kadang tak boleh buka lah. Risiko, very risky ya. Okey, <laughs> sorry minta maaf banyak lah. We, we spend apa ni almost half an hour kan for apa ni, to solve, to solve this particular problem eh. Sekarang boleh menafas. Okay, uh, so that's a mandate. The PIC number and the VIT number. And then you need to develop a research proposal with a potential partners and coordinator eh. Okay, ada dua cara. There's two way whether you approach any researcher at the European country, it is good if you can engage with the previous Erasmus Plus grant recipient in developing developing a new research proposal eh. The other one, the guys from European country tu they engage with you eh. Macam saya sebab kebetulan eh dalam bidang design I'm uh, one of the, the, the I mean active researcher lah kan. That is why when Kuangko search my name through the apa ni in, through the Google search he he found my name eh. Okay, that's the the first one eh. Uh, step one. Okay, step two. What should you do eh? Normally during the, the in developing a proposal eh. Your potential partner will ask you something something apa ni, something ridiculous ataupun something that out of your mind lah eh. Contohnya Wangko eh, he want to develop a proposal for apa ni, a, developing a new master degree program for wood for wood and furniture towards industry 4.0 eh. So he asked me to to see minister tau uh, at that particular point of time the minister of education, higher education is Datuk Sri Idrin Juso. Okay. And luckily, I have a, a student, a master degree student. Her name is uh, Farah Natasha Lia Idris. Eh? So I contacted Farah Natasha, uh, uh, asking her, "Can I see Minister?" Yeah? So he he told uh, she she told me that it is hard to see Minister and yeah? because you need to make an appointment, contoh kan. Unless if you can go to the KPT kan uh, at the at the apa ni, lobby of the KPT ni if I can apa tu catch the the minister then I can talk to the minister straight away lah. Tapi saya fikir ah macam cowboy dah pula kan, eh? it's not proper kan. So Farah told me that Okay, uh, how about if if I can write a letter kan? So saya buat lah, uh, I'm requesting letter of intent lah kan because uh, Kuangku asked me to 
to get a letter of intent from the Ministry of Higher Education kan. Letter of, of intent ni eh, important because it shows that this is a the most important project for Malaysia tau. Sebab tu if you look at uh, apa ni FRGS eh, yang last cycle Ministry of Education pun dah start request letter of intent eh, from anybody who want who will engage with you during your FRGS project punya apa ni research activity kan. Eh. Okay, uh, itulah saya, I, I wrote a letter and send it to Farah Natasha. Farah Natasha forward to the minister and suddenly uh, a few days later I received call, phone call from uh, uh, from Professor Dr. Raha, eh? Abdul Rahim. Uh, Professor apa ni, Prof Raha ni she she used to apa ni, work with Ministry of Education kan, Higher Education yet she is the VC for UTEM lah kan so Prof Raha uh, called me and she she tried to confirm lah whether uh, am I uh, in the process of developing a proposal with a guys uh, from Spain kan. So uh, sebelum tu Prof Raha telefon lah dia kata uh, can I speak to Dr. Sherman? Dia kata saya kata yes I'm Dr. Sherman. Uh, dia kata dia kata lah are, are you uh, in the process of developing a, a proposal with uh, a researcher from CITEM Spain? Uh, saya kata yes. Lepas tu dia kata okay because she, she apa ni uh, Prof Raha she told me that she received an email from Spain. But at the same time, uh, I'm re re requesting a letter of intent uh, from Malaysia. Eh? So, they not tell whether it is a, a, a same project. Lah, kan? So, I said, yes, uh, we are developing a, a proposal for Erasmus Plus project. Eh? So, uh, lepas dah confirm tu, a few days later, uh, dapatlah, I, I receive a, a letter lah from uh, Datuk Paduka Hamisa uh, Taspe eh. Datuk Insinia Dr. Siti Hamisa Taspe yang masa tu dia dia yang keluarkan surat mewakili menteri Datuk mewakili Datuk Menteri apa, Datuk Idris Yusof eh. So uh, when I receive that particular letter, I, I send the letter to to Kuanko at CITEM Spain then he apa ni uh, he try to he he he, he responds to me whether if I can get anybody from the industry and that they will they plan to engage eh? uh, so sebabkan uh, this is a wood and furniture eh? saya beritahu lah uh, in, in Malaysia there there are agency MTIB and eh? Lepas tu dia, dia pun beritahu juga, uh, Kuangku beritahu Okay, he know, he know about NTIB, he, he, he tried to apa To communicate with NTIB as well kan, so uh, tu saya kata uh, uh, NTIB is, is uh, the, the one organization that I know who can support wood and furniture punya apa ni, research project lah kan So bila <coughs> Bila dia dah dapat info tu, dia kata tanya, is there any professional body in Malaysia uh, who can apa, they tap the opportunity eh? So at that point of time, I haven't seen lah eh, any professional body yang related to to apa dia, uh, to wood and industry kan, eh? tapi uh, I I told Kuang Ko, maybe he can get further information through the MTIB kan, eh? so lepas tu baru dia uh, apa ni, NTIB banyak liaise project directly to to Kuang Ko lah, give information about the industry and the professional body lah. Okay, next is about budget eh. Dalam permohonan Erasmus Plus ni, uh, when we want to apa ni, uh, formulate the budget eh. Uh, budget tu is only for certain uh, dia panggil apa, vote aja kan. Kalau Malaysia dia panggil vote kan. Uh, yang pertama dia ada staff cost, 
staff cost ni sebab we as a researcher we are staff so we need to formulate staff cost eh. Staff cost ni biasanya yang akan uh, give you the amount of money is the, your your coordinator from uh, from European country lah dia akan formulate lah kan. Dia akan agihkan sama banyak. Normally sama banyak. Dengan partner-partner yang lain lah. So dia akan akan budget dalam lima, lima ke enam orang punya budget lah. And then uh, second is travel cost maknanya if you have any any place that you will more will go then there is a travel cost lah yang akan apa ni akan kita formulate and then cost cost of stay maknanya if you plan to stay one week or two weeks at your partner's country then uh, there is a cost of stay as well eh? and then equipment cost then sub contracting cost eh? Uh, normally when we talk about staff cost, travel cost, cost of stay, equipment cost dengan subcontracting cost ni you need to negotiate with your potential partners eh. Contoh uh, kalau equipment ni, equipment apa nak beli? Uh, macam industry 4.0 eh, last time we at UITM so since we are handling the more on technology kan green uh, design semua ni we requested the high end punya uh, high end as high end software hardware lah for designing a, a product a furniture this a furniture kan so we we give a high end spec kan? and it cost uh, more than 60000 euro kan? and we and we managed to get that eh? and and uh, okay when you uh, apa ni provide and equipment cost punya specification you need to make sure that it is an equipment that you want to buy for future tau bukannya beli sekarang sebab there is no apa ni wireman lah sebenarnya dalam dalam Erasmus Plus punya budget kan maknanya if you request you want to buy uh, you want to purchase a high end software contoh alias kan eh, alias wavefront so you need to spell out all the specification on the the proposal lah. So bila dapat grant, you kena beli exactly from that particular specification. Dia tak boleh ubah. Melainkan when it is something to do apa ni very important circumstances kan. In certain circumstances then you need to justify lah kenapa. Selalunya dia tak akan ubah dari segi Harga lah, harga tetap. <laughs> Cuma model tu dia mungkin uh, boleh apa, ubah. Depend on the kelulusan daripada European Commission juga. Sebab bila kita submit the information to our coordinator then coordinator dah akan submit kepada European Commission. EU kata okay, EC kata okay then baru kita boleh ni lah beli. Then biasanya talking about equipment ni eh, equipment ni dia akan minta kita provide information lah uh, dari segi how to purchase the equipment ya yeah. dan kalau ikut praktis di Malaysia biasanya kita dapat duit dulu baru kita beli equipment kan tapi di uh, apa ni Erasmus Plus punya project kita kena beli equipment dulu baru dia bagi duit kan okay. tapi semua tu terjamin anda dia panggil uh, partnership agreement lah ya. Yeah. Okay uh, that's on the equipment lah maknanya nak beli equipment kena equipment yang di masa depan bukan di masa sekarang. Contoh kita beli high end equipment saya semua high end software kan. Alias. The reason we use alias ni sebab data dia panggil apa dia panggil wireframe kan. Cloud data point dia tu boleh migrate from alias to Katia Engineering. Engineering pula boleh migrate ke Pastran, Nastran, LS Diana 3D. Lepas tu boleh migrate ke Robotik kan. Lepas tu data tu boleh reverse engineering kan. Itu dia, itu yang elemen industry 4.0 tu kan. On big data, data migration tu kan. Maknanya when, when you want to apa ni, produce design, uh, uh, product, furniture kan. You can do it apa ni by using uh, Pen aja kan. So you can 
can apa you can materialize the the project product tu you, you guna IT je kan IT kita nak tunjuk yang industry 4.0 punya elements lah in the project Okay uh, and then we need to provide a, a contract documents normally letter from the deans lah So contract do document ni biasanya kita ambil ya, kita ambil daripada kita ambil daripada I staff portal je sebenarnya Uh, biasanya yang sign dekan ataupun registrar eh. so, Sebab saya masa tu attach dekat IRMI eh. sekarang dia panggil renew Dulu call Yang saya ni assistant registrar je lah satu, satu line je Dia panggil contract documents uh, We need to provide this document lah Okay uh, Okay, and then we need to provide a financial identification bank account eh. Bank account ni dia ada satu borang dah eh. Okay, bank account ni dia punya financial identification. Ha, dia bentuk dia macam ni. Jadi kita bagi benda hari je. So benda hari will apa ni provide the, the information lah of which bank ni eh. and then biasanya Encik Norizan Abdul Talib lah will sign the the uh, financial identification ni eh. Okay uh, lepas financial identification then you need to to go to the step 3 lah step 3 ni Uh, okay Okay ini step 2 ya bila step 2 ni biasanya Kita akan siap proposal tau bulan 2 Then uh, Our potential partner ni will submit the proposal to the EU, EU European Commission Dan biasanya dalam bulan 11 akan dapat result lah So after we receive the apa ni the the panggil the grant tu no? then we need to write uh, the panggil ledger dengan monthly time sheet eh. So monthly time sheet ni bentuk dia macam ni. Mali time sheet ni dia kira pembelanjaan yang kita kena spell out lah in every month eh. from month one sampai uh, the project end okay then uh, Mali time sheet ni yang dokumen ni biasanya kita dan dengan dengan uh, timbalan naik chancellor yang akan sign lah eh. Contohnya, okay, monthly time sheet ni dia ada empat jenis. Satu dia panggil untuk manager, kedua dia panggil researcher trainer, ketiga dia panggil technician dan yang keempat dia panggil admin. Okay, dia punya rate ni berbeza-beza lah. Tapi, uh, kiraan time sheet ni biasanya dia berdasar pada staff cost tau. Maknanya staff cost yang you dapat tu, you kena tabulate jadikan dalam untuk time sheet. Yang benda ni, in this uh, case, This particular case eh, I have given Dr. Arwan lah, one of our team members to formulate dia punya timesheet ni eh. Sebab nanti dia akan tulis ikut day by day kan, sehari tak boleh lebih 7.5 jam Haa kan, so kat sini kita tulis lah apa buat uh, work package satu Sebab dalam research ni dia ada banyak work package kan eh. uh, Yang detail work package ni biasanya konsortium partner kita yang akan give a detail information on on apa ni on work package lah eh. So this is time sheet eh. Time sheet ni kita buat later lah after you receive a grant. Kita akan buat bersama-sama lah sebab yang through our experience kan we have apa ni difficulty juga lah because this is our first time and then we need to communicate several time eh, in order for us to make a balance sheet on the the punya apa the punya time time sheet punya budget tu eh. 
Okay. Itu <coughs> timesheet eh. Itu after after receive a grant baru buat ledger dengan timesheet. Bukan buat ledger timesheet sebelum. Kutia, kalau masa sebelum tu dia akan pening. Yang penting dapatkan grant dulu. Okay and then you need to see, uh, set the key of meeting. See, key of meeting ni biasanya mesyuarat tu akan buat face to face lah. So in our case, a group from Spain ni dia datang lah dengan group consortium ni. Uh, masa tu baru kita kenal siapa dia Kuangko and then uh, we know that oh there are several apa ni partners ada yang dia, kalau macam our group tadi kita ada dia, daripada uh, Spanyol ada dua kan KIT dengan UPCT lepas tu daripada Poland pun ada daripada KIT Germany pun ada. Dekat Malaysia rupanya kita ada partners from UPM, UKM, USM eh uh, UITM dan NTIB dan kebiasaannya Erasmus Plus project ni since the the value of grant it is up to 1 million euro kan you will see you will notice that there are many researcher involved eh? and most of them they are a high profile researcher tau. Let's see tunjuk seorang-seorang dalam apa eh? dalam in, 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 at another slide eh. Okay so our first key of meeting ni it's happened at uh, uh, UPM lah. Uh, yang first day tu uh, kita lepas tu dia akan kita akan mobile lah lepas UKM pergi ke U, uh, lepas UPM pergi UKM lepas tu pergi UITM uh, MTIB USM kan. Okay uh, itu untuk first key of meeting. Yang saya yang I, I notice that during the key of meeting ni baru kita tahulah uh, kenal lah hati budi masing-masing kan daripada European country ni kan. I think it is okay sebenarnya if we can engage with researcher from European country eh. They are very respected as a specialist ataupun subject matter expert in our area field of study kan. Uh, kan. Cuma yalah from European country ni dia punya English ni is not the standard English kan. Uh, so boleh as long that we understand we deliver lah that's the most important kan. And then you need to provide certificate of staff involved in research. Eh? So certificate of staff involved in research ni dia ada satu borang yang mana borang ni uh, surat ni VC sign. Eh? Certificate of staff, certificate of staff. Okay borang ni VC sign. Uh, VC tahu dia akan dia kena provide borang ni. Certificate of staff involved in making 4.0 uh, kita akan, akan ada information of project details, full name of participant, saya sebagai project manager, kalau dekat national grant dia panggil principal investigator lah untuk UITM team kan, group. Jadi kita kena spell out lah peranan selain daripada manager, saya juga researcher, lepas tu kita ada Prof Azmi, ada Dr Arwan, Dr Azrul, Dr Syaril dengan Cik Salih kan. Bila mula, bila akhir, berapa jumlah grant, berapa contribution untuk UITM. Sebab kita ada sembilan partner. So kita, we need to provide satu million euro pada sembilan lah kan. Dapatlah satu ribu lebih. Almost one, almost half million Malaysia ringgit lah. So we define our project ni, our group ni lebih pada frontal materials and industrial application, green technology and sustainable development. Okay, we see sign. Lepas tu, we need to understand the work package eh, work package. Dalam research ni dia ada work package dia, dia ada work package one sampai work package yang akhir. Tujuh eh, contoh eh. For year one up to year three. Maknanya every deliverable ni kita kena kena apa ni kena ikut as stated in the work package eh. Ha, kan, apa yang kita kena deliver. Agak meticulous jugalah when you write a proposal ni kan. You, you will notice that the proposal ni is not a simple proposal lah. Very meticulous. That is why you can see kan the element of smart tu apa ni uh, ada eh in the proposal. Smart means specific, measurable, achievable, real, realistic and within a time frame eh. So element smart tu kena ada dalam proposal tu lah. And then uh, how to spend money eh. Okay 
kalau kita nak guna apa ni dipanggil pemeneraan there's a cap eh, where you cannot spend all of it. your any grant kan. So in order for us to spend uh, the 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 money from the from the Erasmus Plus grant ni we need to follow the European Commission punya garis panduan rules and regulation eh. and normally if we want to spend the money eh, we are allowed to to make a per diem nak pergi per diem ni you can spend uh, your your apa ni your budget ataupun your your funding ni based upon what you uh, allocated at the staff cost, travel cost, cost of stay and, and uh, on the proposal kan up front maknanya kita boleh ambil contoh kita nak pergi Jerman kita kena kita kira lah berapa staff cost, travel cost, cost of stay contoh 22,600 kita boleh apply 22,600 up front so benda ni akan bagi duit tu pada kita before we apa ni go to Germany contoh eh lepas tu dia panggil per diem we are allowed to do per, per diem for international grant aja. kalau Malaysia tak boleh kalau Malaysia kita apply advance pun tak dapat semua kan kita dapat berapa persen aja kan balik nanti buat penyelarasan tapi untuk Erasmus Plus you can get uh, exactly dari segi apa amount of budget ni upfront eh, sebelum pergi and then quotation for equipment pun ada ada apa ni, uh, you need to know how to to apa ni, uh, you need to know how to to deal with the the quotation for equipment eh. Okay, there is a rule from European Commission lah, if you want to purchase equipment and eh, you need to purchase equipment less than 25,000 euro then you can use apa dia panggil, you can purchase your equipment tu based upon uh, several quotation kan. But if you purchase a company equipment more than 25,000 euro a year, you need to make an open tender procedure. procedure. Uh, maknanya kena kena iklan kan lah and then kena benda hari yang kena uruskan. The, the reason is that they want to make sure the transparency of the pembelian tu happen eh in economical way lah kan. So maknanya European Commission dia, dia akan tengok dari segi pembelian barang lah. Dia transparent on that. And then talking about output of the project ni biasanya untuk KA2 dia, dia biasanya in the form of new program lah. Then dia akan ada several papers normally for <coughs> the dissemination plan eh. Then you are, you have a privilege to use Erasmus plus logo. <coughs> for any dissemination purposes eh memang kita disuruh diwajibkan untuk untuk guna Erasmus Plus logo as a part of our dissemination plan and then we need to have a VAT declaration biasanya VAT declaration ni uh, dia akan surat daripada uh, apa ni koordinator uh, dia mention that uh, kita uh, untuk UITM kita ada apa ni tax assumption kan maknanya kita tak perlu bayar tax lah dia panggil VAT declaration ni maknanya kita dah declare untuk sebarang tax ni kita kita waive lah dari segi tax tu kan mutual tax and then every travelling we, we need to provide an individual travel report ni eh? so individual tra travel report ni dia bentuk dia macam ni individual travel report ah kat sini saya letak ni travel report ah saya letak individual ah ni individual travel report contohnya meeting ok baru ni kita pergi Poland saya, saya pergi Poland last year Warsaw so kita kena buat laporan satu keping je dia panggil individual travel report dan untuk nak tahu berapa kilometer ni kita tak boleh guna Google Map kita kena guna EU, EC punya calculator lah so EC 
Calculator dia, dia bentuk dia macam ni lah Kita klik dia sini, dia akan keluar calculator ni Kita tulis berapa distance lah Distance calculator kan, contohnya pergi daripada mana Malaysia uh, UITM Okay, kita ambil dengan UITM sekejap lah Pergi ke Warsaw Warsaw of life. Okey contoh ni. So kita akan dapat berapa kilometer jarak dia. Jarak ni yang kita akan tulis dekat report tu nanti. Ha uh, kita akan tulis dekat report ni. Jarak ni kan 9000 km one way. Ya yeah, biasa kita akan provide the information bila pergi bila balik kan. So maknanya every travel ni you Sebut pasal report, sebenarnya sekeping kertas je bagi tahu berapa jarak kilometer pergi dan kita sign. Tujuannya apa untuk meeting ya, agenda. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, that's the thing lah. Eh. The most important thing needs to be considered when you applying and when you get grant eh. How, and how you manage grant lah eh. Okay, I would like to introduce our uh, our project members lah eh. Saya in, in the year of 2018 we, we, made, we managed to get Erasmus Plus grant together with nine partners ni lah eh. Uh, daripada UPCT Spain, daripada CTAM Spain, daripada Warsaw Poland, daripada KIT Germany, MTIB, uh, USM, UKM, UITM dan University of Indonesia. Uh, untuk UITM pula uh, saya sebagai project managers and then kita ada Prof Azmi daripada Fakulti uh, uh, apa ni uh, kejuruteraan awam Dr Arwan Fakulti kejuruteraan awam Dr Azrul daripada Fakulti Art and Design Industrial Design Program Dr Syaril daripada FSG Sains Gunaan dan juga Cik Salim Mujir. Uh, this is our logo lah when we develop a, a project ni kita ada logo lah we call it making 4.0 in Malaysia wood and furniture industry and this is the picture during the key, first key off meeting lah okay. when we have a key off meeting bila UITM jadi host I need to give a a brief of introduction about our apa ni our university our project our expertise and so kalau furniture design tu lebih kurang macam ni lah yang UITM student buat kan and then we have a, another meeting dengan dekat USM kan contoh UPM, uh, UKM, MTIB so I notice that in, in our partner ni kita ada uh, ramai eh uh, kan dia bukannya Erasmus Plus ni bukan seorang dua yuk kerja dia ramai sebenarnya kan very apa a plenty number of staff involved eh so some, sometimes we need to have a online meeting kan sama ada guna Skype ke apa eh and this is our our meeting, second meeting uh, dekat Poland last time, last year we went to Mardom, Mardom is one of the okay, vendor for IKEA kan who provide a furniture so it is fully automation lah, kita tengok daripada front line dia sampai ke end line dia, semua automation lah eh Sebab tu when you purchase IKEA product and furniture and very precise and very apa, you can do it yourself kan. And then since we are developing a curriculum kan, even we are a SWA, apa ni, self-accreditation, SWA akreditasi kan. We, we still engage with MQA lah. Just want to inform MQA that we are running uh, Erasmus Plus punya re research apa, project, developing a new curriculum kan. So we we have a several cinema, uh, cinema seminar, seminar in Malaysia kan. Right and we used to have, a, we used to host a, a third uh, making 4.0 meeting. Uh, at UITM eh, baru ni. So terima kasih pada uh, Dr. Zainab Magno, pengarah OIA who apa ni, who highlight our research 
ni research punya project ni at the UITM dia bagi global news eh. and then we have uh, this is one of the activity lah eh. ramai eh group ramai itu pun wakil dua je eh every university dua tu apa ni tu members eh, yang yang akan mobile lah we have a plenty number of researcher when you need to apa ni go to, to any meeting eh, you only can send two person je kalau kita host kita boleh ramai lah tapi kalau kita pergi contoh pergi UKM ke UPM ke ataupun pergi Poland ke KIT Jerman ke Spain ni kena dua orang je not everybody can go lah and then we manage to set out set up our mini lab lah for making 4.0 eh sebab dulu ada isu ke nak letak kat mana lab ni since we have equipment uh, more than 60,000 euro kan eh? high end software semua eh? so we decided that we uh, apa ni apply uh, space at under apa ni dekat IRMI bangunan wawasan tu so we can put all the equipment uh, down there kan eh? so if there is a researcher from faculty of design ke faculty of Apply science ke, who who want to use our lab, they can go there kan. So tadi issue ownership lah. And then we we publish paper juga, eh? papers Q2 at journal bagi bio resource kan. Together we ada uh, apa ni team members lah. Ada daripada kat sini UPM, UKM, U, apa, USM kan. Uh, MTIB daripada UPCT Spain ke IT Germany. So it is good sebenarnya eh? for visibility kan eh? it shows that you have a, a collaborative punya effort eh? in build build up networking kan at international punya apa platform kan eh? and then supposedly minggu lepas kita kena pergi Jerman because of the apa ni the uh, COVID-19 pandemic to hit Malaysia eh? hit all, all over the world so we need to make another way lah. So we have a, an online punya meeting eh. Okay, I would like to show you the the environment eh. Macam mana rupa keadaan bila bila kita orang berjumpa eh. Okay. Uh, okay, this is a short movie eh. Uh, bila meeting tu Uh, this is uh, during the welcome uh, meeting, uh, welcome speech meeting masih di, di Poland uh, last year. Start or to extend collaboration between different institutions, and uh, frankly speaking, at least a couple of different projects um, that uh, I'm taking part in, part in uh, originated from uh, them. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, masa discussion ni yang tadi lebih pada welcome speech ya. Yang ni masa discussion ni kita akan duduk aman-aman je lah. Dapat almost one million euro kan, so. Memang plenty number of research in Poppen. Mungkin dia yang kenal, you are kenal ni. So perangai kita lebih pada pergi give our consultation lah on the on how to develop a project tu kan. So another movie saya nak tunjuk. Okay bila on dia di online meeting tu dia di macam ni lah pula. Kita kerja kerja jalan so that, that is why we need to have uh, dia panggil uh, contingency plan the first one and then we need to have a, a risk management and a mitigation of the project eh. Bila tu we need to spell out in the proposal lah eh. So bila kata tak boleh pergi Jerman because of the COVID-19 pandemic hit uh, all over the world we make a, an online meeting. Uh, eh? Ada kerja tu jalan In the meantime, lah. we will continue working online and uh, we will do our best in this 
project. So uh, what we are going to to do today is to is to uh, okay. So group saya pula ada kena buat presentation on our work package on valid validation of the panggil content. So we one of our uh, table lah, Dr. Shafi presentation. After we get all this information, we're going to make the outcome reporting to all of our partners. And then uh, at the same time, uh, because we are, we are doing uh, some Okay. Okay, sebelum tu saya nak tunjuk projek kita eh. Uh, we are developing a, a new pro master degree program uh, for wood and furniture towards industry 4.0 kan. I think I need to show this movie because picture describe a thousand words kan. This is uh, our project lah in brief. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> talking about the project. Eh. Uh, kalau if you if everybody notice that uh, in the year of 2017, uh, there's a they a wave eh, atau penggelombang from uh, European country and eh, especially in Germany. Eh. They are always talk about apa ni, industry 4.0 kan. Right? Even if you look at uh, a statement ataupun uh, uh, 
company report from Frost and Sullivan, one of the business punya panggil apa, forecasting uh, agency eh, they uh, ni they, they, they are predict that in the year of 2019, 2020 kan is the the apa ni is the uh, is the best time for industry 4.0 ni dia move to Southeast Asia kan so if you look at the FRGS grant eh, ataupun any grant eh, related to Erasmus kan kalau ada keywords industry 4.0 kan you might have a tendency to get grant lah kan sebab tu if you look uh, at FRGS yang last cycle kan you will notice that most of the recipient ni uh, the, the project is about industry 4.0 kan Okay, uh, saya nak tunjuk partnership agreement eh. When you get grant, you will, you need to sign a partnership agreement lah eh. So partnership agreement ni biasanya VC ataupun uh, nombor dua VC kan, uh, TNC akan sign. So ikutkan kat sini TNC UPCT dengan TNC UITM akan sign. UPCT ni jadi, -jadi sebagai uh, coordinator in our consortium lah. So in the partnership agreement ni dia akan tulis uh, apa ni the amount of grant that we receive for this particular project kan. So almost one almost one million euro and then there's a few article term and condition that we need to know kan. So who 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 in the ni kita akan tengok lah siapa coordinator kita kita akan nampak dalam partnership agreement ni lah. UPCT we become coordinator Wasa uh, Dr. Masi ni kan uh, daripada Wolves Poland uh, daripada KIT kita ada Dr. Walkers uh, yang ni daripada CTEM CTEM yang saya sebut tadi lah daripada Spain dia dia jadi apa PI atau Project Manager untuk uh, apa ni CTEM untuk USM kita ada Professor Dr. Rokia kan Hashim uh, one of the prominent figure kan uh, research at USM ni, Prof. Rokia ni jalan-jalan orang and then Prof. Sarani from UKM kan, the panel untuk LRGS Malaysia kan, PRGS kan multi-million apa ni uh, researcher grant recipients kan. and then we got uh, director of MTIB engage, uh, saya mewakili UITM lah sebab team saya nak saya wakil lah, jadi PI and then we got Prof. Jega from UPM uh, yang selalu tulis banyak kertas dalam Q1 kan, Q2 uh, sebab tu kalau Google Prof. Jega ni kita dapat uh, dia punya ni beribu lah kan number of uh, apa ni citation and then from there we spell out the apa ni uh, this is the, the bank identification and then we spell out the how we divided the the funding eh so the, this is the breakdown of the budget lah. We get the budget ni based upon a work package and every six months eh, on the deal, apa, the project punya performance lah. And then, uh, yeah, they, they, they will not give you lump sum lah. They will give you on, on apa ni, stages lah. Uh, so, so if you not perform, then they stop the, apa ni, the sending funding lah. So we we received these two transaction lah already last time. So we have uh, for the, uh, a funding in in our uh, project account. Eh. And then uh, okay, uh, there's a uh, okay. Saya nak beritahu satu lah. Eh. So we we have a partnership agreement. And then we have uh, apa ni, staff involved in the the Erasmus Plus ni kan, signed by VC we have a mandate kan, apa terjadi if we are not performing tau ramai orang tak tahu, if we are not performing on apa ni, in, in the Erasmus Plus research punya activity ni Vice Chancellor of University, they, he he has a privilege to, term, apa, to, to change all the the name of in in the participation participant list you know stuff involved right? so this is a, a in order to make sure that the projects ni uh, 
uh, if it completed, uh, accomplished uh, at the end of the study, uh, at, at the end of the project. So that is why when you determine the team work, uh, you need to make sure that they are some someone who can deliver, kan? Uh, tak ada, kita bukan apa ni, bagi nak letak, letak sesaja kan, semua deliver. Contoh saya as a project manager, I need to make sure that we need to deliver. Second, we have ProAzmi who are very experienced in in standard, in MQA kan. Uh, I learn a lot of, uh, I, I learn a lot from him on the uh, development of new curriculum eh. So he become our reference lah. And then when he talk during the the meeting kan, University Europe ke, University dekat Malaysia kan, semua dengar cakap dia kan. Uh, itu important tu. And then we have Dr. Arwan who are very meticulous in apa ni, in budgeting kan. He can apa ni, formulate our budget very detailed, very precise and and balance all the on the balance sheet kan. So he is good on apa ni, administrative. So kita letak dekat situ. And then we have Dr. Azro who are uh, Dr. Azro who is uh, one of our apa ni, our researcher yang background dia furniture design. So kalau ada something related to design punya uh, apa ni uh, matters we can uh, refer Dr. Azro. And then we have Dr. Shari Anwar Bari from Faculty of Applied Science. His background is more on wood technology kan. Eh? And he has experience in developing a, a new program for apa ni, wood tech at U, UITM kan. So that is why during our apa ni, uh, meeting, I always uh, ask Dr. Syarin lah untuk bentang kan. Bentang any progress lah after we discuss. And then we have Encik Salim Mujir. Encik Salim Mujir ni, he's, he's a apa ni, former PRGS grant recipient. Uh, research dia more on apa ni craft wood wood design and craft uh, untuk apa ni Malaysia punya context kan so he got experience in apa ni handling PRGS kan so I think everybody in our team ni we are apa ni sehati sejiwa <laughs> and then we we can deliver lah kan so kalau tak boleh deliver um, VC boleh overrule lah untuk change to another tapi tak best lah kalau, kalau, kalau jadi macam tu kan. Yang penting kita kena deliver lah. Okay, the partnership agreement and then okay. Our project eh, just to give you uh, apa ni, a, a quick uh, apa ni, overview lah eh, about our project. This is our project improving higher education, higher education knowledge to work wood and furniture. Uh, industry 4.0, making 4.0. And our objective is to establish a European Malaysian Collaborative Consortium with the objective to develop a master degree for engineers of uh, furniture smart factory that will modernize higher education degree by focusing on IT, ICT skill to increase competitiveness of the wood and furniture industry uh, of Malaysia. And for your information, Ministry of Higher Education has shown the, its support to making 4.0 through the through an intent letter, surat yang saya minta Datuk Idris Jusso so sign kan. Yang last sekali uh, Datin, uh, Datuk Insinia Dr. Siti Hamisah Taspi yang saya mewakili menteri lah. So this is uh, our consortium lah. When we develop a project ni nak dapat 1 million euro ni we need to have a consortium tau. Uh, so everybody needs to work within this circle ataupun framework ni eh. So kalau di Malaysia kita ada national project kan. Uh, and then kalau Europe dia ada in for wood, lepas tu dia ada juga IM Future kan. So kita lantik UPCT ni as a coordinator uh, apa ni untuk untuk pegang duit kan and then dia akan bagilah. So orang akan tanyalah juga uh, biasanya coordinator ni akan dapat berapa banyak. Coordinator dia akan pegang duit tu secara banyak tau. Dia akan bagi uh, 50% after signing apa ni Uh, signing the agreement eh, dengan the European Commission and then they, they akan disperse ataupun distribute the, the funding tu lah based on stages as agreed in the partnership agreement. So kat Europe kita ada UPCT, ada KIT, CITAM, Wolves, kat Malaysia kita ada UITM, USM, UPM, UKM dan kita ada NTIB dalam national project ni. 
So who is who in the making, kita define lah. UPCT Spain ni dia punya kepakaran dia lebih pada industry 4.0, robotic, internet of things, additive manufacturing and augmented reality. Wools pula dan CTEM focus on wood furniture, technology processes. Uh, and then we apa ni, uh, address that Malaysia is a good position in global information technology reported by the World Economic Forum, second Asia country in the technological development and Malaysia is considered as perfect entrance for industry 4.0 technology in Asia to support the manufacturing and uh, industry wood and furniture uh, the most. Yeah? Kita develop program ni untuk future tau. Sebab tu kalau if we look at the recent punya apa ni situation on the technological readiness level kan saya rasa uh, apa ni technological apa ni kalau ada sembilan skala tu we are at level three sebenarnya. Tapi along the way since the wave ni happen kan Europe pun dah, dah move apa ni better ataupun advance kan so we believe that in a few years ni since apa ni everybody uh, were uh, apa ni under the environment of industry 4.0 kan robotic lah autonomous lah apa big data kan we believe that someday Malaysia akan up to that uh, apa ni level ataupun situation juga ya eh, to apa accommodate the needs of the industry lah eh. so we define you item is a research group on frontier material and industry application with technology and sustainable development and then UKM uh, uh, faculty of science which degree offer focusing on coating technology advanced composite and material recycling and UPM is uh, offer degree related to management forest wood uh, science technology forest recreation and outdoor USM offer uh, basic coating technology manufacturing process wood technology knowledge hub furniture and manufacturing and MTIB will participate defining learning outcome and risk in the industry feedback. Eh? So these are the, I mean this is the, the work package. Eh? If you look at the work package we, for our project in particular we have seven work package. Eh? Uh, we start with package seven yeah, iaitu finance and uh, management of the project. Sebab kalau tak ada duit mana, macam mana project nak jalan betul tak? So when we uh, apa ni, we plan the budget ni baru kita uh, we look into the work package one. When we develop a curriculum we need to analyze and make a comparison and then we need to go to work package two we need to develop a training path, learning outcome, structure and methodic, methodological aspect and then we go to the work package three develop of training materials and guide a trainer and then we make uh, we we need to apa ni we go to the next level, work package 4, uh, test, pilot test, analysis, master course, uh, validation and accreditation and then work package 5, it is more on quality control and risk management and work package 6, more on dissemination and exploitation. Ada issue lah on the development of new curriculum ni because we want to make a very generic program, uh, European uh, nation kan. So we need to understand uh, the CGPA and the conversion of ECTS, European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System kan. Macam mana keseteraan dia. So we need to deal with them and then we need to get a feedback from the industry whether the, the program ni is realistic or not kan. So <coughs> we in every work package ni kita adalah person in charge yang we look into apa ni the, the project lah eh. Uh, work package 1, UPM, work package 2, KIT and then work package 3, WOOS, work package 4, UKM, work package 5, CTEM, work package 6, WOOS and USM and work package 7 management lebih pada UPCT lah. And then we have a milestone 1, milestone 2, milestone 3 yeah, to make sure that we are delivered yeah, uh, with a certain work package yang we, we formulated uh, on the, on, apa ni, in the proposal. Then, okay, we plan the the workflow ni based upon monthly punya achievement eh? and this is uh, the title of what we need to deliver lah. So we need to plan this properly. Macam nak develop program baru lah. We need to know what to do and kena study on the situation dulu, 
kan and then kena apa ni buat analysis, create seminar, get feedback and then barulah ada aktiviti kan. Uh, sehingga work second year pun sama juga month one dengan month two we need to spell out how many apa uh, apa ni weeks involved during the discussion kan. Eh? Ataupun on during the meeting and then this is the year three kan. Eh? Okay, we need to spell out the expected impact eh, short term on the who is the target and uh, potential beneficial beneficiaries, quantitative indicators, qualitative indicators, and we need to spell out the long term impact eh, uh, on the target group for uh, potential beneficiaries, quantitative indicators, qualitative indicators, and then. <coughs> Cooperation and communication agreement of consortium kita kena ada satu sejiwa lah that distribution uh, of role and responsibility today we are we should agree in all all in all eh? and then cooperation between partners involved is almost in work package maknanya semua terlibat cuma yang ada PIC tu just jadi apa dia monitor kan kita boleh refer seorang and then clear communication through mail and then Uh, 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 mail and uh, main tools kan. Kadang-kadang kita perlu ada Skype meeting every three months. We have create our internal Google Drive sebab file besar eh. So every apa ni uh, output ni we can upload uh, in the Google Drive and then we have a public project website eh. Uh, sebab tu kalau if you google in the apa ni in the internet kan you will you will uh, okay uh, making 4.0 you can see our website eh? our our project eh? this is one of the dissemination plan eh? uh, this is our project and then uh, partners kan contoh daripada KIT ni KIT ni kita tahu lah siapa yang terlibat uh, dia akan ada nama-namanya kan Profesor, doktor, kan ada yang banyak staff lah eh. Kalau you ITM pula uh, ikut kepakaran kita lah lebih pada apa ni uh, lebih pada design eh. Uh, so kena tulis lah kan. To give a confidence lah. Bukan nak tunjuk yang kita ni apa kita ni ada grant tak? Tak ada. Kita nak tunjuk yang kita ni perform. So when our ni, potential partner from Europe ni dia akan ada trust lah kan maknanya kita ada grant kita pernah handle uh, research apa ni at national level kita ada publication maknanya kita punya output ni kita publish throughout the world kan and then somebody cite from outside sebab itu publication is important lah to to apa ni to for for the recognition and apa ni uh, dia panggil validation of your to validate verify your output eh, ataupun your research tu lah. Okay. Uh, okay balik pada slide ni tadi. And then cooperation lah kita uh, ada agreement lah untuk dissemination ni kita every newsletter ni akan dikeluarkan oleh WUS dan USM and then internal communication ni kita kita akan based on consortium ya and then kita kena plan lah how many days for meeting kan where when dengan duration kan masa saya perhati kan group, group Europe ni kalau datang Malaysia semua ni lama dua minggu eh kita kalau meeting kat tempat dia orang dalam tujuh hari <laughs> tak bagi kita jalan <laughs> dia orang suka jalan Malaysia ke eh so, sebab tu sampai Malaysia saya bagi makan durian kan lepas tu Ah, semua apa ni tahu oh welcome to Malaysia kan and then associated partners kan we need to apa ni uh, provide them eh associate partners ni penting when come to the stage where we need to develop ataupun validate nak analyze validate ataupun nak to apa ni uh, verify our training contents tu lah eh sebuah industri yang akan ni atas recommendation macam MFC ni UPM yang cadang uh, macam Brisbane pun UPM cadang, Unilin dekat Penang pun USM cadang dekat Spanyol ada group dia dekat, dekat apa, Wolves ada Academy of Fine Art 
So dia akan verify eh, our apa eh? our project. Okay, uh, I think the last one eh, which is uh, quite important eh, on the financial. Uh, this is important lah. I think you cannot get this in the at the apa ni at the website lah. Eh. This is based upon our co co uh, coordinator punya sharing eh, on financial matters eh, and reporting. Biasanya uh, kita kena tahu financial uh, management timeline, budget eligible, non-eligible, budget item, supporting document management, financial report, audits dengan reference and document next step kan. And then in this uh, particular project, we gen on general info, eligible for three years punya project. Maknanya kita nak tahu ni untuk three years per project, we get almost one million euro. And how we receive the budget ni? Kita, kita akan tahu oh, untuk uh, month one, month two nanti coordinator akan dapat 50% pre-financing ya. Maksudnya dia dah pegang dah 50% daripada uh, setengah juta, uh, satu juta euro ni kan. Uh, maknanya coordinator daripada Spanyol dah pegang. So how we spend the money ni uh, it's depend on our apa ni agreement, partnership agreement tu lah. Uh, every six month dia akan Uh, Connected daripada Spanyol ni akan transfer duit eh. And then in month 19, month 20, kita kena make sure 40% duit tu dah uh, dibelanjakan. Kan after, and sorry, 40% tu kita akan dapat. Sorry lah, 40% kita akan dapat after we success uh, submit interim report eh, di month 18 eh. And we need to make sure 70% of uh, pre-finance duit tadi tu yang ni dihabiskan, dibelanja kan. Sebab tu kita kena belanja exactly ikut garis pandang European Commission kan. Baru kita boleh habis. Kalau kita ikut pemeneraan, uh, mesti ada balance dah kena pulang balik lah. Ada risiko lah kalau duit tak habis kita kena pulang kan lah. Tapi kalau kita tak perform, kita dah belanja, kita ganti, kena ganti. Ha, itu lah memang tak tahu. Ha, kan? nak kena ganti tu mana nak cari duit eh? kena potong gaji kan. So gaji pula tak banyak kan. <laughs> uh, so kita kena perform lah. Uh, after all we need to perform lah because we apa ni we sign the agreement kan we apply project together sebab tu kita kena sahati sejiwa lah project ni ya. Eh? And then uh, when come to month 13 37, 38 eh, uh, we can get another 10% lah after we success uh, apa ni, submit final report eh. Uh, this is how the the budget been apa ni, uh, segregated from the EC lah, European Commission tu. No? Okay, <coughs> on the financial time ni uh, biasanya dapat start, kita start project 15, 11, after we sign GA, kita dapat Uh, pre-finance 50%, kita buat kick-off meeting lepas tu kita submit intermediate uh, report lepas tu kita, da uh, kita dapat uh, 40% lagi dengan kita habiskan 70% budget when project end, final report dan kita akan dapat balance uh, 10% bila tahun ketiga ya yeah. and then kita kena clear lah siapa yang akan who uh, who will partner receive the budget ni kita, kita akan ada seorang person in charge lah di UPCT Spain ni kita ada Marina, dia akan jaga financial form and matters eh. And then we are already working on the financial agreement of institution, we contact ASAP. Financial agreement ni dia merangkumi agreement of, on the content, get the document sign and send it to the agency for validation. And then who will partner receive their budget, the institution yang terlibat lah eh semua akan dapat budget tu and then kita kena aware that ada winter holiday kan bukan semua hari bekerja lah and then partnership agreement contain the procedure payment procedure man, man amount for budget eh be sure that the payment are aligned to milestone achievement task completed uh, requested document receive and then before to know when how much and remember We need to to apa ni? We need to know that that 
there are set of rule imposed by the EC eh. Maksudnya kita kena follow European Commission punya rules eh. Uh, not the European University. And then UPCT must ensure that co beneficiary are maintenance the appropriate forecast record spend fund as per forecast budget kan. Uh, Maksudnya coordinator tu kena, kena make sure kita terima budget tu eh. And then UPCT must have prompt access to the original document. Sebab tu kita ada Google Drive ni. And then we need to keep all the metric, the documentation ni up to five years after project com completed. Eh? Uh, project accomplished. Maknanya kita tak boleh buang. Kena ada Google Drive yang boleh simpan. Eh? And review of budget rules and obligation for all partners ni uh, eligible cost uh, incurred during the eligible period. Eh? Uh, masa kita plan tu masa tu kita kena gunakan budget yang kita approve yang kita minta sebab tu when you want to purchase any equipment eh, you need to purchase equipment tu advance tau bukannya now sebab if you apply now when you get uh, apa ni grant next year then when you apply ne next year tu mungkin dah obsolete kan itu antara risiko lah tak boleh buat wireman tak tu ha, tu antara risiko kan kenalah pakai yang version lama sebab tu when you apa ni uh, propose budget for equipment you need to uh, make sure that it is uh, apa ni for future punya equipment and then necessary for good implementation of action for seen and include in annex 3 semuanya ada dalam annex and in current and registered at beneficiaries official account and according with the regulation applicable tax and nature uh, legislation eh. So the reason tu here is that uh, when when we apa ni uh, deal with cost ni dia mestilah something yang reasonable, justifiable, justif justified, uh, identifiable, uh, ver verifiable, complying with the principle of sound management financial management dalam konteks ekonomi and efficiency ya. Yeah. Okay, non eligible cost ya. Yeah. Cost not include the budget, in the budget. Maknanya yang tak ada tu dalam budget we cannot uh, buy or purchase ya. Yeah. And then equipment such as furniture, motorcycle, R&D equipment kan. Uh, telefon, mobile so tak boleh. R&D equipment ni yang buat eksperimen kan tak boleh sebab yang yang equipment yang untuk develop curriculum boleh. Ha, contohnya beli software, beli hardware, beli laptop kan ha, Boleh, dia tak kata laptop tak boleh beli kan ha. Sebab tu kita dalam proposal saya, saya tulis laptop Macbook Pro harga lapan ribu lebih Sekali bila dapat grant boleh beli, ha, tu dah boleh pakai lah Bukan sesaja beli Macbook tu kan nak, nak tunjuk ada gambar Apple tak ada sebab dia Macbook Pro ni dia dari segi design, grafik dia punya dia punya quality of work tu dia lebih apa ni lebih high high quality lah kan. Uh, lepas tu dia dia allow dari segi data migration tu. Safe, very safe on apa ni dia panggil on security kan. Ada reason ya. Yeah. And then cost of premise pun tak boleh kan dari segi heating, rent, rent, repair. It's not eligible. And then exchange losses, return of capital, provision for losses or debt pun uh, itu, itu not eligible lah. Deductif VAT pun tak sebab kita memang tax exemption eh. Uh, and then uh, contribution in kind for third party pun tak boleh. Tak boleh sedekah pada third party. And then depression cost eh. Pun tak di, it's not eligible. Depression cost ni macam cost panas kan. Eh. Ini kan ada cost panas ni. <laughs> and then cost declare but not supported by adequate supporting documents pun is not eligible and then excessive and reckless expenditures pun not uh, apa ni? Not eligible. So this is the total of budget yang benda ni biasanya coordinator yang akan akan uh, formulate kan. And then we, kita kena bahagilah lebih kurang sama banyak eh, pada semua partners depend on biasanya berbeza pun dekat equipment lah sebab equipment ni some of university yang eh, dia plan to purchase different apa ni expensive equipment kan so dia dapat lebih lah 
So this is the breakdown of the total budget lah eh. Uh, alright. And then important for exchange rate ni, kita ada sebenarnya dia ada link eh nak tahu budget. Kita tak boleh exchange rate ni tak boleh berdasar kepada side punya apa currency exchange <laughs> ataupun dalam internet kena ke, berpandu pada EC European Commission punya uh, exchange rate eh. Staff cost ni it, ini dia punya formula lah eh. Cost of staff for all beneficiaries working directly and achievement of the objective of the project that the unit cost uh, bersamaan dengan euro bagi per day per staff kan. Ni kena ada seorang yang handle lah kan. Yang orang yang somewhat yang ada background finance ke ataupun engineering kan. Uh, on, 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 on apa ni formulating staff cost ni dalam monthly time sheet kan. Monthly time sheet kan. And then all individual participate, participating in the project must demonstrate and contractual relationship with the beneficiaries, beneficiary institution of the project. So when we travel uh, at various different countries ni kan, sebenarnya dari segi dia punya rate tu different eh. Uh, these are the, dia panggil uh, amount of in euro per day eh. Contoh kalau kita pergi Germany, as a project manager macam saya, project manager saya boleh dapat sehari 280 lah sehari. Kalau pergi seminggu, kalau pergi 10 hari kira dapat 2800 untuk untuk apa ni, uh, staff cost saja, duit pocket je kan. And then kalau pergi Spain dia murah sikit, Poland murah sikit, kalau dalam Malaysia dah 48 euro lah per day eh, bukan, bukan per week per day. So pecahan uh, members ni dia ada yang manager, ada te ada teacher, researcher, trainer, ada technician, ada academic staff. Ada admin staff eh? admin staff, administrative staff. Okay untuk staff cost, uh, staff cost ni uh, dia punya supporting document uh, UPCT will request them to all partners. Kena kita kena provide the segi formal contractual relationship with beneficiary, beneficiary institution for staff and employee and then join declaration and monthly time sheet lah tiga benda dokumen tu biasanya UPC kita ni koordinator akan minta lah dia akan bagi apa borang kita isi uh, lepas tu kita submit lah kecuali time sheet tadi kita ada kena isi form tu apa secara manual lah ikut work package yang kita nak deliver eh. Okay travel cost and call of stay untuk travel ikut distance eh kalau dekat je tak boleh claim lah nak pergi UPM tak boleh clear lah. Tapi kalau kita travel uh, jauh kan. Eh? Uh, jauh ni untuk flight tiket normally kita boleh boleh guna ni lah untuk sekepala. Biasanya dua orang lah eh. Uh, seorang boleh boleh apa ni boleh guna seribu seratus euro lah ekonomi punya flight. And then untuk staff stay the abroad eh. Uh, less than 14 days kurang dua minggu sehari kita boleh guna 120 euro lah. Maksudnya duduk hotel lah. Kan duduk asrama kan. Duduk hotel lah sehari 20 euro kan. And then for travel cost, cost of stay ni kita ada calculator yang saya tunjuk lah macam mana nak kira dia. Travel cost and cost of stay ni if the place of departure is different from home institution, a prior uh, authorization from the agency is needed. Eh? No financial contribution for travel less than 10 km yang masa sebut tadi dekat-dekat eh. And then purchase travel ticket including cancellation insurance eh. And then supporting document untuk travel cost and cost of stay ni kita kena scan lah every transaction, invoice, ticket, apa ni boarding pass related document statement and then kena ada attendance attendance list kan. Signature lah. Maknanya setiap kali meeting kena ada attendance list and then kena complete travel report and then agenda and minutes of meeting kena provide sekali. Uh, this is for the uh, the purchase of equipment between uh, 25,000 uh, euro to 134,000 euro beneficiaries should launch a tendering procedure and obtain competitive offer from at least three supplier. This is uh, the, for, for the reason of best value for money on transparency equal treatment and avoid conflict of interest. If uh, over 134,000 euro national legislation will be applicable. Uh, 
So note that offer you already must have uh, have must been updated and mana kena tunggu eh. And then in order equipment uh, for Malaysian partner contract and tendering procedure tu equipment must be purchased during the first year. Maknanya dapat first year kita kena beli. Masalahnya kalau kita nak buat open tendering procedure kalau UITM kita kena ada duit tu dalam account kan. Tapi ikut partnership agreement dia akan bagi duit tu stages kan. Maknanya sekarang ni kita kena deal dengan mendari lah untuk untuk buat ten, open tendering procedure kan. Kalau more than 35,000 euro a year lah kan. Maknanya kita based on a partnership agreement sebab dah janji kan. Daripada Europe dia akan transfer duit tu. Okay kalau tidak tak boleh beli barang. First year tak boleh beli barang. And national rules prevails eh. Uh, uh, always uh, follow your domestic legislation and then inspiration is not eligible. Uh, guides, guidelines for the use of the grant check 3.2.5.2 general guides to prepare a tendering procedure. Ada the guidelines dia yang kita kena follow. And then equipment and contract consider, cons tendering procedure 3 ni for Malaysian partner supporting document kita kena bagi invoice bank statement for all purchase tendering procedure documents plus three quotation from different supplier to be included in the final financial statement proof that the equipment is recorded in the inventory in the institution including uh, registration number, identification, identification code etc. And on subcontracting, uh, this is uh, applicable for WOS, USM and U UPCT lah, UITM tak perlulah so dia kena provide the documents ni lah. Expenditure traceable <coughs> Kita kena make sure all the finance accounts ni are traceable eh. Boleh dicari lah eh. Boleh kita review dalam Google Drive. Maknanya apa yang universiti lain beli dalam consortium kita boleh tahu. Kita boleh nampak quotation dia. And then summary of uh, document, supporting document per <coughs> budget heading ni kita kita, kita boleh uh, apa tengok pecahan dia dari segi actual cost dengan unit cost ni lah. <coughs> And then supporting document custody, uh, original record must be kept up to five years kan. Termasuk tiket, flat tiket semua invoice, uh, receipt, bank statement kan. And digital copy pun kita kena simpan lah. Email lah jangan buang. And then action will be the object of continuous monitoring and supervision by the agency that the desk monitoring then field monitoring. Yeah. And then financial reports, kita kena submit entry report 18 months dengan final report. Mana ada dua report penting lah to make sure the the apa ni budget ni uh, kita akan masuk ke ke coordinator. Eh. An internal financial monitor report every six months lah. Ini uh, coordinator akan akan tengok dalam Google Drive lah. Kita dah upload ke dah eh. Okay, check and audit lah. There, there is an audit lah eh. Kita kena audited juga ni kan. Uh, along along the apa, uh, the way of research activity ni. Daripada EACEA, -E daripada European Commission, daripada European Court of Court of auditory dan OLAF ya. Yeah. OLAF is European Anti-Fraud Office eh. And then on the administrative and financial penalty, the agency is entitled to suspend or terminate the implementation of the action as well as apply on the financial contribution deduction of grant if rules set up out of the grant agreement and its annexes are not complied with ya. Yeah. So we need to be careful on the purchasing matters eh sebab we it can be suspended and terminated eh. And then reference document this uh, this is the link kan. Maknanya kita kena baca link ni dalam dalam website Erasmus Plus eh. On the project management, contractual document, reporting, designation and visual identity. And the next step after the kick off meeting uh, kita kena ada apa ni? Kita make sure that Uh, take your travel stay, bank statement, kita kena remind lah eh. Fill in travel report and then uh, fill the joint declaration stuff 
put in the financial form, uh, bank account kan, and then uh, anything related to the financial matter ni kita kena kita kena upload dalam Google Drive dan kita kena send to the our apa ni administrator dekat UPCT Spain and then we will be working on the partnership agreement. Partnership agreement tu penting lah. <coughs> Banyak based on trust sekarang ni kan. Partnership agreement tu ada one of the trust punya apa element. European ni dia memang jaga dari segi trust lah. And uh, read carefully, uh, this is the tip lah eh. Read carefully the proposal and fully understand the project and contribution in and work in each work package and clear understand on the project timeline, complete timesheet on a monthly basis, plan in advance and communicate any difficulty, unforeseen needs and unexpected change to coordinator eh. Kena ada tu lah eh. contingency plan kan. Look into the risk management, we need to have a mitigation plan kan. So benda tu kena ada apa, kena selalu berlaku lah. And then this is the, the example of payment procedure lah eh. Maknanya yang yeah, breakdown tadi lah. Hai tu je. Okay point of now we are almost two hours eh on on the session. So yeah, Prof. Okay um, uh, I would like to open maybe, for Q&A uh, yeah. lah. So you can maybe have one or two questions or so, uh, in the chat so far tak ada and I've been checking your Facebook pun mostly just technical question. Um, so can we open? Ada anyone with question can unmute and perhaps uh, ask Dr. Shariman now. Hmm. Saya minta maaf lah at, apa ni, uh, on the beginning tadi kan, at the beginning hmm. of the session tu file tak boleh buka lah kan. <laughs> Tapi I hope that uh, the apa ni all the, the information, the slides and the movie tu explain or describe the the, the project lah eh, in, in general. Uh -huh. Okay, ada uh, soalan eh? Hmm. So the slide nanti they will, uh, all participants boleh dapat kan? Ah, slide boleh dapat. Uh, Alright. So any question, uh, any any inquiry or clarification for? Uh, Dr. Iza ada nak tanya. Dr. Iza Idaham, Abu Hassan. Ada. Okay. Just uh, thanking Prof for the information and then some had to leave. Uh, uh -uh. They say thank you. Sama -sama. Right. Um, kalau if uh, tak ada nanti if anyone wants to contact you they can uh, they can find you easily dekat uh, Renew Office. Uh, so contact re Renew Office. Saya akan type juga lah syahriman.z.a at uitm.edu.my hmm. Kalau nak hantar okay. handphone 9351 Tentang proposal tu kena ingat ya bear, bear, bear in mind that the deadline of uh, a new uh, apa dia panggil uh, research proposal ataupun project proposal for Erasmus Plus ni dia punya deadline dia uh, biasanya on February lah. I see. On February every year eh, every year and you will get the result in the mid of November. Uh, so the preparation for next year dah kena start dah kena within start this year lah kalau if you are aiming for next year. Yeah definitely. Okay, okay um <laughs> I think we uh, don't have any more question. They will probably direct because kalau dah start easy atau trying to contact maybe your, they will contact you for tips I'm sure. Um, so thank you Prof uh, for the guide not only for the preparation on the technicalities uh, but more on, on uh, maintaining visibility especially. So hopefully uh, those active, current active researcher maybe ada yang dah boleh nak apply maybe they are motivated to start and junior researcher dah uh, know that you have to start establishing your research craft ni lah. Hmm. Especially tadi Prof kata your cari visibility. Partner, cari, partner ha, lah. cari, partner. cari partner kena visible kan maknanya kita nak tunggu orang daripada Europe cari kita hmm. nasib-nasib lah kan tapi kita kena cari partners kan uh, establish 
mungkin konteks OIA ke kan OIA ada senarai universiti yang ada partnership agreement ataupun yang ada apa ni MOA kan MOU kan so kita boleh start dengan dengan KA107 punya application and then bawa KA2 uh, maybe just one question from uh, dari from me lah uh, yeah. if you if you're already currently a holder of uh, this Erasmus grant uh, uh -huh. can you be a member of another one ataupun is that possible can you have multiple uh, grant atau you manage dua Erasmus plus grant at the same time mm -hmm. is that possible uh, yang saya tahu ada group daripada European dia 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 ada another Erasmus grant as, tapi as a member lah not as a oh. not as a apa dia panggil uh, project manager lah hmm, cuk, tapi tu lah bila kita nak dapat grant ni kita kena commit lah we need to commit kan so kalau ada national grant pun you need to deliver juga national grant so dia, dia kena logic lah dari segi apa operation kan uh -huh. So dia tak, cannot be too ambitious lah kan, takut tak boleh deliver kan uh -uh. <laughs> uh, Alright, um, okay. okay Prof, uh, okay. I guess I think kita ni lah, so just a reminder from dari uh, second period They say siapa uh, yang belum uh, register, you may register, there is link I think it has been posted a few times uh, To get your training hour as well as uh, Prof punya slide nanti Okay, nanti saya akan share right. slide dekat okay. kriteria Right. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Okay, thank you especially Prof. Okay, terima kasih semua. Alright, thank Nak you. Terima berjaya dapat grant Erasmus yeah. Plus. Terima kasih. Hopefully you ITM banyak application next year. Okay, bagus. Okay. <laughs> Cuba, tak cuba tak tahu eh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Okay, bye. Thanks,